So on today's lesson uh, 6.2, we're going to be solving uh, systems um, <clears throat> with a different method, not just by graphing. Um, the class opener, it's asking you to do what we already know how to do to solve by graphing. So let's take the top equation, which is already in slope intercept form, y equals mx plus b. Um, and let's graph that in red. Let's take the bottom equation and graph that in blue. And all we need to do is find the point of intersection to find the answer. This might be a good time to just review basic graphing. The quickest way to graph an equation is if you have it in slope intercept form. Uh, the reason, well, first of all, the word form just means the way it looks. So if you have y by itself equals uh, mx plus b, but here's the, the catch. m is just a number. Uh, b is just a number, OK? So if you have y equals a number x plus a number, then <clears throat> you will be able to graph it quickly. Um, you need to know what this first number actually represents. That's the slope. So let me just write that down, slope. Now, we should know what slope is. It's the steepness of a line. Um, and uh, we could also remember that slope is a fraction. So let me do a fraction. And in that fraction, the numerator is the rise which means up. But then again, if it's negative, it could go down, OK? And the denominator is the run, OK? So uh, think about this. Slope is rise over run. Now the rise, once again, the rise could go up uh, or it could go down, depending on if it's positive or negative. Now the run, for the sake of not getting confused when we graph the run, we're always going to look at it from left to right. It's always going to be a positive run. <clears throat> anyway, so keep this in mind. This m value, the number in front of x, is a fraction. Now, the number over here, that's the y-intercept. And that's simply where it's going to cross the y-axis. Again, the y-intercept is simply where the line will cross the y-axis. So, um, And if you're wondering what the y-axis is, if you look at any graph, most of the time, They'll show you the x. This is the x. And they'll put a y right here. That's the y-axis. So the number that's at the end, this b value, is going to tell you where it crosses your y-axis. How could you remember if they don't give you the x and the y? Just remember y. The y-axis always points to the sky. Yay, it rhymes. y points to the sky. Anyway, <clears throat> you need to know slope-intercept form <clears throat> to be able to graph equations quickly. So uh, again, this is all review from semester one. Uh, once again, <clears throat> to graph a slope-intercept form equation, you start with the b value. So to graph an equation, once again, the first thing to do is start with your b value. And you simply put a dot right on the y-axis <clears throat> where, where, you, where your b value is at. So in this first case, whoops, this first case over here, the top equation, uh, y equals a number x plus a number, right? y equals mx plus b. The b value is negative 3. Yes, you have to include the sign that's in front. So the b value is negative 3. That's what we're going to start with. You go to your y-axis. You go to negative 3. This is positive 3. This is positive 1. Negative 3 is down here. And this is the y-axis. So the b value is right here. You need to put a dot right there. So you put a dot right on the negative 3. <clears throat> and then after you plot your point of your y-intercept, your next step is to rise and run according to your slope. And with, that's going to be the, the uh, number right in front of x. And keep in mind, uh, when you look at your number in front of m, if it's just a, a number, you want it to be a fraction, rise over run. So like, let's say you had a 3 right here. Uh, you're going to have to put the 3 over 1. So let's actually just continue with the class opener on the red equation. OK, so step one was to identify your b and start with your b. We said the b was negative 3 on the red equation. And then after that, we're going to go from that point, we're going to rise and run according to m. I guess it's important to say that from that point, you rise and run, OK? So I just wrote that in, from your b. OK, so let's take a look at the graph. <clears throat> so once again, the b value is negative 3. Put a dot right there. From that point, you have to look at your slope the number that's in front of x. The number is 2. Now remember, slope is rise over run. You want it to be a fraction. 
If it's not a fraction, you put it over one so it'll look like a fraction. So just uh, for the sake of showing everything, I wanna say, I wanna write it down over here. The slope is, on the red one, two over one. Now, because it's positive, I'm going to go up. If it were negative, I would go down. So this is a positive two, so I'm gonna go up two units from this point. So I go up two, and then over one, and then I put a dot right there. And then after that, I, I mean, my, there's my line. I'm done. This is my line. I could put just a line right through it. But as you can see, it's a pretty tiny line. So let's make it longer uh, by continuing the pattern of up two over one. So again, if it were a negative two, then from the B, I would have gone down to an over one. You always run to the right, never run to the left. Okay, so it's either up or down, depending on if it's positive or negative and you're always gonna run to the right. And that's what I tried to explain over here uh, when we wrote down these notes. Rise could be positive or negative depending if it's, I mean, it could be up or down depending if it's positive or negative. And the run, we're always gonna go to the right, okay? So anyhow, uh, let's continue with the pattern of up two over one. So from this point, I go up two over one and put a dot right here. And of course, you could continue that pattern of up two over one, up two over one. And you could even use the pattern backwards, right? Instead of going up two over one, if you want to extend it the other way, just go with the backwards pattern. Over one this way, down one, uh, down two, I'm sorry, over one, down two. And you could get the line uh, completely across the whole graph. So here's my red line. Now, what does that line represent? This line represents all the answers that exist to this top red equation. For example, if I pick any point on here, let's say I pick this point right here, just for fun, right? You don't have to do this, but just for fun. Let's pick that point, which is the coordinate three, three. Um, what this is saying, since this is a point on the red line, it is an answer to the red equation. Okay, so if I plugged in a three for X and a three for Y, check it out, two times three is six, six take away three, it really does equal three. Any point on this line will be an answer to that red equation. Once again, the line actually represents the infinite amount of answers that exist to an equation. Let me erase this. Anyhow, let's graph the blue equation. Uh, of course, I'm gonna do this a lot faster because I've already taking too much time explaining how to graph something you should already know how to do. So the blue equation, y equals negative x minus three, that crosses also, you start with b, once again the notes, start with b, so what's the b value? The b value is negative three, so once again, it crosses at negative three, this time I'm gonna do it in blue, and from that point, I need to look at my slope. Okay, so this was the b value, this is the m value on the blue equation. So remember, the m value is the number that's in front of x. So what number is in front of x? Some people might say there is no number, it's just a negative sign. Yeah, but if there's no number, you could, it's really like an invisible one, okay? So the slope is really an invisible one. So you could say the slope of the blue line is really negative one. Now you want it to be a fraction because you want it to be rise over run. So you wanna make that negative one look like a fraction put it over one, and that's your slope. So, once again, the steps. You first start with your b, you put the dot right on the y-axis because the b is really the y-intercept value. Now from that point, rise and run according to your m. So we already plotted the same point, which was negative three, same y-intercept as a red line. Now from this point, I'm gonna rise and run. Now because it's negative, I'm not gonna go up, I'm actually gonna go down, right? It's positive to go up, it's negative to go down. Positive to go to heaven, negative to go to hell. Anyway, that what helps me remember, at least when I was in high school. Okay, I'm talking too much, let me just continue. Um, so, rise negative one, run one. So I'm gonna go not up one, but negative. I'm gonna go down one, and then over one, I'm gonna put a dot right here. And so on. And I could go backwards. Instead of down one, over one, down one, over one, I'm gonna go backwards just with the pattern. Over one, up one, over one, up one, over one, up one, put a dot here, dot here, dot here, and so on and so on. I think we get the idea. It's gonna be a solid line going right through those points. And of course, because this is a system, it's two equations working together. So I wanna find that one answer that works for the entire system, that one answer that works for both equations, which really boils down to the one answer that works 
that's shared, the point that's shared. Uh, and this point right here is the coordinate. Now notice from the origin, I need to get to that location. And the first number is the X number. So you're not gonna go to the right, you're not gonna go to the left, you wanna stay at the origin. So the X value is gonna be zero. The X value is zero. And then uh, you wanna go on the Y, remember this is the Y, you wanna go positive or negative? Obviously you need to go negative to get down here, so that's negative three. So the answer to the system, the X value is zero, the Y value is negative three, that's the answer to the entire system. It's the only pair of numbers that work, right? Plug in a zero for X, if you wanted to double check it, two times zero is zero, minus three is negative three, plug in a negative three for Y, so it'd say negative three equals negative three, you're absolutely positive that it works. Let's say you plugged in zero and negative three on the bottom one, zero for X, so negative zero is still zero, and zero minus three, that's, that's negative three. And if you take the negative three on the y and you put it up here on the y, it's gonna say negative three equals negative three, which is also absolutely true. So what we've done is double checked it. We are absolutely positive and happy because this is the correct answer to that system of equations, and we solved it by graphing. Um, are you gonna get an answer all the time? Most of the time you will get one answer. But then again, sometimes you might end up with parallel lines, parallel lines that like never cross, and then that's when you say no solution, uh, no soul. Or you could do the symbol, no solution. Um, or sometimes you graph a line and then you graph the other line and it's the same exact line. They're perfectly on top of each other. Uh, then that would be infinitely many solutions. Uh, and then again, <clears throat> there's another section of this uh, 6.1 that I ask you to classify, and that's when you look at the word wall, uh, and this would be inconsistent, this would be uh, consistent dependent, this would be uh, consistent independent, because there's one answer. Anyhow, uh, it's a very long video on a class opener, but I hope this helps, especially all the new students or the old students that forgot how to graph using uh, y equals mx plus b, slope-intercept form. Uh, I hope this helps, guys.